friends. Uh, today, I walk you through some final touches of the Christmas decorations, some things that I've been doing, and then we have a tree getting delivered today, and let's keep our fingers crossed that this one works. I shared the color palette a while ago. Oh my gosh. I'm just looking at it through the viewfinder and the camera and it just is so good. It's so good. <laughs> I can't get over it. There are moments where I step back and I'm like, wait, did I actually create this? And the answer is yes. So, uh, I got tree skirts finally. I really like these ones from Target and they're super reasonable. I'll make sure to link them and I will link other things as well. But I don't know what do we look at first. Let's look at the tree first. So the colors this year are this really bold dark red, some copper bronze, this teal, and then like really traditional dark greens. I don't know what inspired me to combine those colors, but they really, really work. And then my ribbon is from Michaels and it's a beautiful like teal, like the same shade as this ornament. I'm gonna show you when the other tree comes today exactly how I put on my ribbon this year. I did it different than I've done in past years because I was working with a different tree shape. So this is a slim tree and it fits so perfect. A slim is slightly different than a pencil. It's not that thin, but um, I think this one is like 35 inches in circumference at the bottom. <clears throat> and the same tree is coming here. I did add additional lights to like the inside and I'll show you how I do that as well. But then I added these magnolia leaves and then I have these anthropology mirrors now that have made it on almost every tree and they're the same as the mirror on the mantle. Like how cute is that? It's funny though when you're looking at this sometimes <laughs> you'll like catch a mirror and you'll think there's like a hole like in the tree and I'll like go to rearrange I'm like oh it's just the mirror. And then I have these brass bows. These are from Studio McGee. But just look at it. And then as you transition over to the garland, these stockings are no longer available. They're from West Elm. Oh, probably five, six years ago. And I just cycle them through when they go with my decor. But they have the tiniest brass sequins and little bells on them. I added the same ribbon to it. And then same colors, magnolia leaves, the big pine cones. And then a cluster of bells with a very long ribbon. The way I did these is I just wired each ornament in with the same florist wire that I use for everything. Same with my stockings. My stockings are wired in. I wonder if I can, I'm not gonna be able to show you, but I wired the ribbon to the stocking and then just wired the stocking from the loop in. And then I started this one a little bit higher because I didn't want them to hang completely even. But yeah, same with the ribbon. Wire at the end, just worked my way up and wired it in. But it's so good. <clears throat> And then I had these really nice gold tinsel trees from Studio McGee that I just added in as well. Nothing here has changed, but I will take you to the entryway. I knew I would land on this after I had time to process it. I knew it needed greenery. I knew it needed lights. I had an extra set of lights that I had bought for the tree. So it's just a garland that I had downstairs with some additional picks added in. And then I brought over the ornaments so it all ties together and then in the wreaths on the hook that I'm hanging this from I just added on the bigger ones some of my ribbon so it ties and connects that and then I had this old brass Merry Christmas and I was like hmm where can I put that and I was like well I'm just gonna add it to the front of the table and I had these three brass bells and I just think like it really now helps connect sorry I have laundry it helps connect like the color story into like, just look at that. Just look at like the focal point that that is. And then just imagine that that other tree is going to be there. It's gonna be so good. I haven't styled the dining room table yet because it's housing all of the things for the next tree. And then I did have these beautiful glass ornaments that I threw in this bowl. And then I had so many of them. I actually threw them over in the kitchen bowl. I'll walk you over there in a minute. 
And then on the pantry shelves, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I started to play with ornaments that I had and I just arranged them in a really, really cute way where they look like they're like kind of rolling and falling off the shelf and I'm really happy with them. And I just added the adhesive that I always talk about. I just added a little piece on the bottom and have those arranged there. And I'm really, really happy with it. Just think it looks so cute. Over here, I have more of those ornaments. They look beautiful in this bowl. I'll eventually, as you guys know, once December hits, I will buy real pine and put pine in there as well. But for right now, I just love the look of it. And then over here, I finally put the finishing touches on this garland by adding some more ornaments so you can really see our colors again and how it all connects. I don't like this one only because I have six candles that are on a timer that go off and it's more than enough light for this little section. And I also love not having this all lit up and just having it focus on the candles and the lantern. But yeah, all connects. I'm really, really happy with it. I am just waiting for a tree delivery and a grocery delivery for today, but I'm so happy. Oh, let me show you what I added in the kitchen. In the window this year, I did something a little different. I had stumbled, what had been in October, I stumbled upon this brass garland in Target. I don't know who it was made by. I'll see if I can find it and link it, at least so you can have the name. It was really reasonable and it's five feet long. So this is two of them and I swagged it and it just looks so good. And I made a bow with our ribbon just to connect it all together. And I just love how it turned out. And then I had this wreath from previous years and I've not put anything behind the stove. And I was like, this, this is the time to put that wreath back there. And I just love how that looks over the stove. It helps accent that gold nutcracker. But yeah, that's where we are at. And I also just heard that there was a delivery. Was it a tree or was it groceries? While I was filming my groceries came. So I am just prepping my lunch for the week. Um, and then I haven't decided what meal I'm gonna cook tonight, but I'll show you what I'm prepping. I am making a buffalo chicken dip. It's two blocks of the one third fat cream cheese, a shredded rotisserie chicken. I just use the white meat and then almost an entire bottle of hot sauce and a dry packet of ranch seasoning. So I'm just mixing that up. Uh, normally I would add like shredded cheese and then serve with celery sticks and stuff. But what I love to do for lunch is I like to put it on baked potatoes and take a baked potato, like two little scoops of that. And that is my lunch. It is so filling. It like, I love spicy. So it just like satisfies like all the things. So I'm going to be baking four potatoes right now and I'll show you how I get the perfect baked potato every single time. These are already clean and I dried them really well. They had a little like sprouts on them, but that is okay. So I'll show you what I do to bake my potatoes. I have this cookie sheet. I'm actually just gonna slide this below and that's just going to be able to catch some drippings because I actually do my potatoes directly on the grate. I have some kosher salt and some pepper. So all I'm going to do I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil on each of these and just rub it all over. I have my oven preheating at 425-ish. And then I am just going to take some good kosher salt and sprinkle that on this side and some pepper. I'm 
flip these bad boys right over. And do the same. And I'm literally going to lay these right on the grill, right on the grates of the oven. And I put that cookie sheet so it catches in case anything would drip leave some space. What's great about doing it this way is it allows for air and heat to get all the way around the potato. And I let these go for about 45 minutes and you get a really good crust the whole way around your potato. I'll let them cool completely and I'll break them open, put them in some food storage containers with two scoops of the buffalo chicken dip and those will be my lunches and I'll just heat them up. So I have been holding off all day because the point of today's video was to decorate the tree and it got delayed until tomorrow, which makes me nervous because the last time it got delayed, it came broken. So we're still only with one tree. It makes me sad because I'm so ready. I just want it done. It's gonna be so good. But this, I mean, can, like, let's, let's take it in one more time. Cause it's <laughs> so stinking good. Ugh. Ay, 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 ay. So my lunches are prepped tonight. I decided to just make some turkey burgers. I feel like in this lighting, you can tell a little bit more the new cabinet color. It's so good. I wish I could find like a light or time of day where you could really see how much darker and like really see the beige come out, but they're really good. So this video isn't exactly what I wanted it to be, but I want to stay in the habit of filming, editing, and uploading so that I have like a little bit of muscle memory going into vlogmas, but I guess I'll have to end this right now. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is... Oh, I forgot it for a minute. <laughs> Kindness is free. Give it to everyone until next time. Which, if the tree comes tomorrow, I'll film it and upload it and get it to you. But until then, bye-bye, friends.